Welcome back to Little Snickers, baby. I'm Michael fucking Rainey, here with Jean Del Calo. Hey there. Did you like that? That was fine. Jake Matera. Hey, hey. Danny yeah, Dubs. That was a normal, regular version of his name. Just want to point that out. Yeah. I'm trying. I understood it. I know who he is without even looking. Cool, man. I heard you uh, got a new vest on the way. <laughs> Did I mention it last week? I think I might have. You may have. I just saw a picture of it. Mm-hmm. I was so excited for it, Mike. I was going to wear it. All the time. It was going to replace fanny packs for me permanently. Are your titties supposed to be that prominent in that vest? Suck my <laughs> third and fourth nipple, you piece of shit. I looked good in that picture, you fucking dickhead. Yeah. You look like you're about to yell, a la snack bar. <laughs> Blow the whole fucking Indians up. <laughs> you fucking pig. Uh, I was making my thin face in the mirror for you, too, you Damn. fucking Damn, that was your thin face? Yeah, you think oh, that looked shit, good? It's the yeah. only good angle of me. That was... Nah, don't say that. Aw, you nasty. I do be crushing on you. <laughs> Jake, I'll be crushing on your oh. ass, too. They just had on Naked and Afraid out there in the uh, vestibule, and Jake was talking about how he might want to be on that show, and I don't think you could last five minutes without getting hard, Jake. Uh, yeah, I mean... Yeah, that doesn't make you leave the island, though. <laughs> <laughs> they, would, they would poke you with sticks till you got in the water. <laughs> The producers who aren't supposed to be on camera? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they come out in ghillie suits. They've been there the whole time. <laughs> like, dude, we cannot have this. You are a oh. penis liability. <laughs> it would be so you, it would be madness for sure. You guys don't think I should wear the vest or keep it? Yeah, keep it, man. I think you could. It's expensive. How expensive was it? How expensive do you think it was? Eighty dollars. <laughs> Eighty five. God, I gotta got two of them. <sighs> oh wow. Two of them and a pair of socks. Would you send it back if it made you look that scary? No, nah, you don't look scary. You put the wanted and most wanted for sure in that vest. That's okay. Nice, Jake. Yeah. That's nice, yeah. I'll keep it. I can keep it for 60 days and, and basically. It surprised me when you told, told us it was a black vest. Back. When you said it was black, I was like, They're, really? Like nothing will be weird about it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except for that it's mostly mesh and the parts where there would be explosives. There are pockets. <laughs> <laughs> no, by black vest, he meant that it's got plenty of space for hot Cheetos, Jake. You ready to flip that coin, Jack? Yes. <laughs> Let's flip it. And I hope I can take it back 30 seconds so Mike doesn't say that joke. Ah, I lost. <laughs> All right, we did it again, Jake. <laughs> Woo! You're in for a treat. We got a real, real lunatic on our hands tonight. Really? Yeah, somebody who I've been aware of for a very long time who still scares me to look at. And uh, it's kind of a bummer because I think all of this hullabaloo could have been avoided if somebody just gave him their proper medication. Playing with fire, uh, Mike. He was a man that needed a pill, and he didn't take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about David Berkowitz, the son of Sam. Oof. He does he look like uh, Andre the Giant, kind of? Yeah, with uh, like a, a toddler version of Andre the Giant. Okay. Normal size. Baby Huey, the Giant. Yeah, he was like fucked up and hulking and very hairy. Yeah. Uh, so hairy that guys in the army used to call him Wolf, and he felt they were bullying him by saying that. But I think Wolf is a very cool nickname. Yeah, that is a cool name. That is cool, but if they were saying it about <laughs> something negative... As he suppose. scratches behind his ears with his <laughs> foot. <laughs> yeah, so this poor fellow was born June 1st, 1953, in New York. Hey! <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm son of Samming here. <laughs> He, did you hear him say poor fella? What's that about? I did hear that. All right, let's He'll see. get to it. Yeah, he, he he's kind of turned himself around now. He's he's really, uh, he's doing good. He's uh, become a Christian. He does a lot of ministry. He's still alive. He is, yeah. Hmm. I, I truly think that he's somebody who probably got on the correct medication and at least presents himself well. Because you're able to read all these fucking letters that he was sending out people during this era, and he's clearly unhinged. Yeah, okay, he, that's why I confused him with uh, the Zodiac, because they were both letter writers? Yeah. Okay. That had to have been fun, man. If you're Writing working letters. at the paper and you get a letter from one of these psychopaths. Now, uh, <clears throat> I have a question. It references an earlier episode from recently. Um, return addresses on these envelopes that he's selling, sending? <laughs> <laughs> probably not, right? <clears throat> um, probably, he probably walked a town over to mail it. You know what? I didn't see them, although I might have one here because I printed out a couple of them, and they do have the envelope here. No return address. How did it make it wow. to the fucking address? Uh, the magic of a fucking stamp. A derelict mailman, because they shouldn't have fucking delivered it. 
<laughs> not in the rules. I stand by what I said. It's only if you want your birthday card back in the event of a mistake. Go on. Very unfortunate set of circumstances growing up, Jake. His mother married a fellow. Uh, his mother was named Betty, and his not his father, but his mother's first husband was named Tony Falco. Wow. Cool. I mean, in 19, 1960s, late 50s, you're named Tony Falco in New York City. You're probably, con- probably connected, aren't you? No, you're connected to the pussy, because that's a great pussy-getting name. Yeah. It's also probably related to Edie, right? She's probably mm. Tony's offspring. And mm. Joe? Joe Falco? I don't know that five. That guy. Isn't he uh, the replacements? Yeah. All right. Now we're talking. Ooh, cool, man. Let's do the rest of the episode about the replacements. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wish I could have one replacement. <laughs> oh, oh, man. But this is kind of sad because uh, they're starting a life together. Uh, Anthony and Betty are. They have a daughter, Rosalyn, which ends up becoming son of Sam's half sister. They get a, a fish market going. It starts off going well. Then it quickly hits the shitter. When the business starts to hit the shitter, Tony leaves. He's with a baby. Not good. Oh, that's terrible, man. Not a good Tony. This, this is even worse. So Betty clearly has low self-esteem, so she becomes somebody's side bitch, a guy named Joe Kleinman. <sighs> now, in Joe Kleinman's defense, the divorce laws in New York were pretty fucked up, and they made it almost impossible to get divorced unless somebody would have adultery pinned on them. Mm. No fault divorce did not exist then for New York. Whoa. Yeah, it was very difficult to get divorced. So he had a side bitch, and uh, it was kind of an unspoken agreement. His wife was aware. His wife would even have Betty over for dinner. Hmm. Wait, he would have the side bitch? He would have the side bitch wow. over for dinner. Oh, my God. Was she making goo ma la? <laughs> <laughs> I like that, John. That was great, man. Very nice. <laughs> and the arrangement was that he would spend his evenings, his weekday evenings with Betty in his weekends with his wife. Holy shit. This guy Real changed pussy getter. everything. Real pussy getter, man. How did you not write a book that people fucking up. take classes on today? I would hate that. Could it's actually the basis Having a of weekend of wife? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the deal. It's like, and women get insecure sometimes. I understand that. But at the same time, like, I wish I can convey, at least to my wife, how undesirable a situation is like that for just for the effort it would take to maintain that. But yeah. everybody knows it's in the open. It doesn't. But it, you got to go to one, and then you got to go home. You got to go to the other. There's, it's just a whole thing. That's polyamory, bro. Yeah. Before, before it was a thing. Exactly. Speak on it, brother. You, yeah. I know you know. Mm. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. It just seems like too much for what it's worth. Okay. Well, pussy's pussy, man. But and what if you had two? If you got a lady that'll suck your dick in a parking garage, that's good enough for me. <laughs> In addition to, or also just the one? Just once. Okay. I've only been sucked off once, and it was in a parking garage. What if <laughs> in Malibu? One? Or Santa, 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 Santa Monica. Santa Monica, yeah. I'm I glad where, you corrected me. I know where <laughs> You were by the promenade, I know that. I was. I know the head getting garage. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're the only one dumping loads in Santa Monica? <laughs> yeah, so I wouldn't like that. Now, his one rule with Betty was, don't get pregnant. <laughs> oh, my God. What do you think this Don't let does? this come and touch your eggs, <laughs> even though I'm going to shoot it directly at it. You think the price of eggs are through the roof now? <laughs> God. Imagine when they're fertilized in this era, Jake. <laughs> she goes ahead and gets pregnant. Oh, that's not good for Betty. I told you not to. But here's the deal. She gets rid of the baby rather than her relationship with Joe Kleinman. Oh, my God. I know. That's but- right. <sighs> Wait, did she give birth to it first? She, put did. It on. she did. Oh, God. Whoa. Yeah. Good but for she her. gave it away. She didn't put it in give a dumpster. Give it away. Give it away. Put it, put it on a fire, firehouse step. What you got? I got a ticket from your mama. <laughs> that baby, Anthony <laughs> Kiedis. <laughs> Anthony Fetus. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta give me goo goo gaga. Got some cum, gotta get it, put it in you. <laughs> Wait, the baby's talking about cum now? He is. He's uh, a sexual, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's a nasty He's baby. a sexually advanced baby. <laughs> this is not. Way the, ahead of his time. This is not the Allie McBeal <laughs> baby. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes to a pretty loving home. Uh, he is adopted by a lovely couple by the name of Nathan and Pearl Berkowitz. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. And when she's shaking that ass, I'll call her Torkowitz. <laughs> they live in the Bronx, New York, John. Home of the frickin' Yankees. <coughs> yeah. They really the are. Guy, son of Sam, the picture that I'm uh, having my eye, in my third eye, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> looks like uh, a guy that goes to the Yankees games every he does. season tickets, Bronx Bombers holder. Yep, he does. Yeah. He looks very oh, cool. New York. Yeah, big time. Now, unfortunately for him when he's a child, a lot of head injuries, Jake. Yeah, that's how me. Uh, he does love baseball, by the way. Loves baseball, uh, a lot of head injuries. A weird fact about him is that he saw five separate car deaths. Whoa. Jesus Christ. Just a weird tidbit to hang on to because that's a lot to to hang on to when you're a child, Jake. In, like, just walking around New York City or was he... Yeah, just in the neighborhood. Jesus Christ. When how he was dropping his rocks going. Yeah. Off, the, off the overpass. When he's 11, he starts to hear voices. Come on now. You ever hear voices? No. You never heard any voice? I wish I would. You deaf, bitch? <laughs> probably. I probably have some hearing loss. About you? You ever hear voices? I suppose I have. Well, they it... say, boy, you need to buy that vest. <laughs> yeah, they said, buy, they said buy one in each size mm-hmm. so you, in case they sell out. And I did. They need to put your ass in the machine with that vest on because you're looking like a snack. Is that what the voices say to you? Do you want to buy one of the vests? I would love to. $175. Well, let's see if I can fetch more on eBay. Do you have any small? Smalls? Yeah. No, but it's it's expandable. Never mind. It has side extenders. Mm -hmm. I really um, (laughs) fucked up with this vest. (laughs) Yeah, man. Light it on fire. (laughs) But here's the deal. He's hearing voices. And he says when he watches monster movies, he feels as though the monsters are seeping into his subconscious. And starting to take control of him. Yikes. Yeah. Yep, you were right about the medication. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did and he the words, never get it? I imagine when he got to prison, he got it. Okay. But the words that he used in regards to the voices were that they were taking me over. Yikes. That is bad. Who'd he tell this to? Oh, That's- dude, he's given plenty of interviews now. As a child, he never expressed this, though? This is crazy. <clears throat> now, before he got caught, he did meet with a therapist mm. or psychiatrist. So they were aware that something was fucked up, but in regards to, to taking medication and being consistent with it, I don't know that that happened. And I'm going to read you excerpts of these <clears> letters, <throat> and it's going to become clear that that probably was not the case. Dude, imagine, like, our our healthcare system has been so bad mm-hmm. forever that in order for him to get better, he had to go to prison to get the medicine he needed. That's crazy. Well, in order, in, in order to get to prison, do you know what he did? <laughs> Uh, I'm still waiting to find out, but it seems like he did some pretty bad <laughs> shit. A lot of fun stuff, man. I, I'm assuming because he's a Yankees fan, stole a couple of home run balls, you know, foul balls from kids. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then they really yeah, the Babe Ruth ball from Sam Lott. He's probably <laughs> yeah, involved with that. Exactly. Somehow. In 1967, his mother becomes terminally ill with cancer, Jake. Jesus. On October 5th, 1967, she passes away. Oh my God, that's quick. It, yeah. Should be a doctor. <laughs> cause should, of death I do. still don't know <laughs> no 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 you just have to comment on the time length <laughs> Whew, wow that was faster than he said <laughs> now our friend right now he's uh he's descending into mental illness as a child he's dealing with the death of his adoptive mother his father his, his adoptive father eventually does tell him that he's adopted but get this shit he tells him that his birth mother died while birthing him. So imagine the kind of guilt that this poor kid's fucking saddled with. Yikes. Now, did he just make a boner on that one? Or did he try to have some kind of psychological effect on the kid, you think? Telling him that was the... I think he was already an anxious, mentally ill kid. And something that could potentially like load you down with that kind of guilt would just send you I, into overdrive. I mean, why do you think that um, the intention the, of the, the pep pep, the papa told him that? I think it might have been used maybe as a, a mechanism to potentially cheer him up because they knew the mother, the adoptive mother was on the outs. <laughs> to cheer him up? No, but th- yeah. th- like, hey, you're that's losing a mom, but you do have a mo- another mom out there. Right, that's what I'm... It's uh, like when your dog dies and your parents get you another one. Yeah, but then you say that the, the mom had died in childbirth? It's an insane thing to say. Yeah. I feel like that's the dad trying to hang on and be like, don't go looking for her, though. Stay with me. Right. Yeah. So it's like you've already gone through this before, but, mm-hmm. you know, 
you've had two and most people only get one. I don't fucking know, man. I'm so sorry, Jesus. Jake. I'm so sorry, Jake. It's okay. I wish I had a better answer for you, buddy. But get this. He starts setting fires. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> there we go. I'm Dude, back. He's he's had so many fucking fires. What's he lighting up? Anything and everything. Dude, he keeps fire journals. Whoa. He says that he keeps he kept filled three journals with documentation on what he set on fire, where he set it on fire, and when he set it on fire. Jesus Christ, man. And on a funny note That is fucking stupid to do. He and some anybody out there is yeah, thinking about it. I, David Berkowitz, <laughs> 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 writes in every page. Adopted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he forms uh, what he called a volunteer fire department with a bunch of the neighborhood kids. Oh, so he was getting himself work. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like yeah. a firefighter who's an artist. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's legit how fire companies got started. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin would start fires and then he would sell insurance. And then, so people would buy the insurance and also he started fire companies. That guy's so smart. Dude. So penny, smart. Penny saves his penny earned, bro. What do you think we could make tonight <laughs> if we set, <laughs> mm, let's say, a pizza shop on fire? Me hungry. I think I'm, the only thing I'm trying to burn right now is some calories after, <laughs> after today. So in addition to setting fires, he's also getting into uh, animal torture. Well, it's insect torture. I don't know if you count that. Do you guys count that? It's <sighs> certainly on a lesser um, punishment plane that I have in my mind. But What in insect? Cockroaches. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I what, can, are you, I can, what are you, ripping their legs off? He's drowning them in glue and also dousing them in chemicals and setting them on fire. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I worked a job Fuck. before where I'd have to pick up uh, mouse traps all the time, mm -hmm. and we used glue traps. So they'd still be alive oh, when they go into glue traps. And they let out a screech. It's so inhumane, right? And what I would free do. free off the glue trap. <clears throat> just I, put a little olive oil on there. Can you really? Yeah, I've set a couple free, drowned a couple too. That's the, so that's the thing I never knew people would do. Like this one guy came, he was just another employee there, just took the mousetrap and walked into the bathroom and just drowned it in the toilet, like right in front of me. I was like crying. I'm like, what are you doing to this mouse? Leave it alone. Meanwhile, it ripped its leg off already. Oh my God. Um, anyway, it's, I guess, I guess that's kind of like a cockroach sort of, but more adorable. Um, and I can't put a cockroach up my ass, but I can't put a mouse up my ass. Jesus Christ. You can, Jake. Jake, you can put anything up your ass What you does this have to do with what we were just talking about? In your heart, if you really want it, you can make that happen. Yeah. So I don't I don't want you to be held back by what people have told you you can't put in there. Thank you. Yes, you can do it. You can do anything. You can fit anything up your ass I that you set your mind to. I didn't say I wanted to. I was, you know. Cockroaches don't have the same effect. That's all I'm trying to say. People hate cockroaches. That's fine. Everybody kills them. <laughs> But to torture it. Send it to hell, man. Light it on fire. <laughs> send it back. Yeah, you're kind of priming it for hell by setting it on fire on earth. <laughs> yeah, and giving it a nice early welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> man, Satan cockroach is going to love you. <laughs> <laughs> I might go set some cockroaches or something. Go on. In 1971, he graduates from high school. What do you think he does after graduating from high school? Becomes an exterminator. <laughs> <laughs> He joins the army. Okay. And when he joins the army, that's when his army fellows nickname him Wolf, which I still don't think is a bad nickname. Yeah, it's way better than most nicknames. And cockroach fire. Imagine me call that in the army, Jake. I would be terrible. Mm -hmm. I would have to do something. I would try to become Wolf, and I would do that by just putting other people's haircuts and gluing it to my body. There you go. Well, he's already got a hairy body. Like That's yeah. why they're doing that. Oh, so you could shave him and use his, just his hair. Could I do that? Yeah. You can do whatever you want. Right. You could, Whether it's your asshole or your body. <laughs> you Putting things in or putting hair on. Yeah. All right, cool. I, I really need you to take on a uh, uh, women's lib mindset. It's your body, it's your choice, and you can do whatever you want with it. Thank you, guys. Okay. All right. Man, that's got to feel uplifting right now, Jake. I'm feeling, I know, he feels good. Look I at feel it. like a new ma'am. <laughs> Get this, he loses his virginity in Korea. Ooh, what was his name? <laughs> Some young guy. I was about to say it. <laughs> but unfortunately, he gets venereal disease. Everybody was getting VD, come on. I was getting some VD. Getting, getting <laughs> some VD. A pussy is worth it sometimes, though. Yeah, to lose your virginity? 
I mean, if you were... It's got to be scarring, though. I mean, just imagine, like, you finally get some pussy, but then... it burns. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The deal you sign with the devil. You guys ever had VD? Nope. Nah. Never had a damn... Never had a damn sneeze out of the thing. (laughs) (laughs) Not a sniffle, not a sneeze. I wouldn't know what to do with myself if my dick had the sniffles. I'll I'll do it then. Just bring a long Q tip. <laughs> <laughs> I did get checked one time of Planned Parenthood. You got the big long Q tip up your penis? Horrendous. Oh Dude, Jesus. when I met my wife, I wa- I was preparing myself to have unprotected sex. So I told her that I was gonna go check. Bro, if there's nothing going on, you're fine. I know, but I was a gentleman. Oh, you're not. You're a fucking sick freak pervert you wanted that thing up there you sick freak <laughs> so i went to planned parenthood and the lady's like all right now we gotta shove this thing in there and this fucking b-i-t-c-h acting like she was loading a musket oh man uh, what did it feel like <laughs> heaven what do you think oh uh, it was awful yeah it was awful dude but i brought back a clean bill of health uh, to my girlfriend and, and- a broken penis <laughs> <laughs> How long does that sensation last for? It like does it go away? The, I don't remember yeah, Mike, that day. Imagine how much you can get for that, that Q-tip nowadays, Mike. Say what? Said imagine how much you can get for that Q-tip nowadays. Oh my God! Selling on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Buy it now, but spelled B-I. <laughs> yes, for Friday's ass. I won't do this podcast. <laughs> So he comes back to the States. He's still in the Army. Uh, he arrives at Fort Knox, Tennessee. I'm sorry, Fort Knox in Kentucky. And he's setting fires there. Whoa. You know, you, you can you can take the dog out of the fight, but you can't take the fight out of the dog. But you can talk to the dog. <laughs> and that's what I'm getting to next. Oh, no. He gets a job in 1974 with a security company, and part of his duties is working with dogs to patrol areas. Cool. So he does well with the dogs initially. And then eventually, he also goes to the Bronx Community College. He gets a job as a cab driver. And then he later gets a job working security at JFK, where he's, again, tasked with working with security dogs. At this point, this is where the dogs start talking to him. And this oh, is God. I can't believe you said that. Oh, you didn't know that? No. Oh, that's... Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay, you so, got, you yeah. know a little bit? I know, yeah. I know a little so bit. So initially, he's... Sounds like you know a lot of it, Jake. <laughs> Initially, John, he's hearing monster voices, but then... From the dogs? No. Oh, yeah. Initially, when he's a child, mm-hmm. monster voices, but then when we get to 1975, the dogs are speaking to him. Oh, my God. And they're not telling him good things. Could you imagine going to HR at your airport security job to complain about a dog talking shit on you? You got to go to HR. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to get like a week off after that, right? For saying that the dogs are being mean to you? Yeah. Yeah. Go into your superior and be like, look, there's... I can't work with them for being very <laughs> disrespectful. All right, we're going to give you a week off. And then you can fly anywhere because you work for the airport. Oh, my God. I never thought of it that way. Or maybe you don't if you're security. Danny, do you know if security guys get to fly for free? No, they don't. You got to work for the uh, airport. Yeah. Well, that's why you just say, talking dog, and you buy the cheapest ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if the dogs get to fly free. They put a little Hawaiian shirt on them. I, I don't think they have to buy their own tickets. <laughs> Send them to Newark. <laughs> they definitely get flown around like fucking, like uh, those flying um, whores. Oh hmm. You know they put an air marshal on the plane and you don't know who it is? They should do that with a dog on each flight too. It's just a dog in shorts. <laughs> <laughs> they should have... Wait, so you don't know which one the dog is? <laughs> <laughs> He gets upgraded to first class. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> you get like, hey, buddy, psst, are you the air bud marshal? <laughs> I'm legally not allowed to tell you. Every time someone gets up to put something in the overhead compartment, he just sniffs their butt. Just, <laughs> man. He was in the window seat in my head, Jake. Go on, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's having a lot of trouble with dogs. And at this point, too. He's thinking about hurting women, Jake. Uh, and for some reason, he wants to hurt women with long brunette hair. He's got a type. He does. The, is there like a genesis to this? Like a, a reason behind the the brunette? Or no? I, saw, I don't know. When you said that, Susu Studio <laughs> popped in my head. <laughs> Before I get her spot, I got to dance a you little were, bit. Yeah. <laughs> you were overtaken right yeah. there. Say the word. <laughs> oh, damn, Jake, you got this. 
I'm sorry for saying Genesis. <laughs> what do you mean you got this? Are you supposed to do the rest of the episode? No, I'm talking about you got this. You got this <laughs> moving. <laughs> you know I can't control these hips. You can't. Whether it's sexing or singing, it does it. It's like they're on a remote control, John. Damn. Who's got that remote control? Your mama. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jake. You didn't deserve that. It's okay. My mom could be so lucky. My, my goal is to always be nice to you. And just make John's life a living, breathing hell. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. <laughs> One hour at a time. <laughs> so he sets in motion this plan to start taking his frustrations and his anger and what these voices are telling him to do out on these poor women of New York with long brunette hair, Jake. His first attack happens. Chris, what do you want to say, Jake? Why, this is very unpopular to say, but why, why not the dogs? I love dogs. But why not? The the dogs are the ones saying stuff, and you're mad. So just go after. He can't control what the dogs are telling him to do. But if he stops the if the dog's mm-hmm. not there anymore, it's probably pretty hard to kill a uh, airport uh, security dog. Here's my thinking. So eventually, the dog that ends up playing the most prominent role, or takes the 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 most amount of blame for what he does, is a dog named Harvey. And he says, this dog, Harvey, is possessed by the spirit. He's a chocolate lab. He's possessed by the spirit. Thank you so much for giving me a breed to picture. (laughs) This dog is possessed by the spirit of a 10,000-year-old demon. I think in his mind, he probably thinks like, all right, I could kill the dog, but the demon is just going to take on another form. And you you think, do you think this is legitimate or do you think it's like he saw Mr. Ed and just like (laughs) was looking for a defense? Yeah. The dog will only talk if he's jamming a carrot in his asshole. (laughs) Yeah, is he just a genius and he's yeah. making up mm-hmm. why he went crazy just to get that good, good medicine? <laughs> that sweet medicine that makes the voices go away. I don't know. I, I think he's batshit insane, but also yeah. I think it's it's hard to reconcile what you're doing once you start getting into this kind of okay. fucked up shit. Christmas Eve, 1975, he commits his first attacks. He attacks two separate women. One of them gets away uh, without being seriously injured. The second woman, I believe she was 15 years old. It's a girl named Michelle Foreman. He stabs her six times. And she lives? She, she survives. Oh, my God. Yep. Wow. Good for her. She survives. Fucking A. And he gets off scot-free for both of these. Yes. In one night. Nobody knows who did it. Wow. In now, the Bronx. Yeah, and keep in mind, like, New York is a pretty buckwild place at this time. Right. So, I mean, I mean they've got bigger fish to fry. Happens in every city every right. day. But, I don't know. For some reason, I feel like in the past, it was harder to get away with stuff. Really? But, I would think so, but even with security cameras. You got arrested for a pocket knife in New York. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, after this attack, he reconnects with his um, his mother and his sister. He finds out where she is, where she lives, finds out he's got a half-sister named Rosalind, and he visits them, and he says they have a nice interaction. So she's not dead, Jake. Good, and they're trending upward. This is they are, yeah. Positive news. Yeah, it was reported that uh, it did not go well, but then I saw an interview with him. He says, I don't know why people said it didn't go well, because we had a very nice meeting. <laughs> why do people keep saying it didn't go well? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, he gets a job working for the post office, making $13,000 a year. <clears throat> that <clears throat> seems pretty good for 75 Yeah, for a guy who uh, has trouble with dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for a guy who hears dogs' voices, that's pretty good sound. Yeah. Getting heckled for eight hours a day on his route, just. <laughs> but I mean, come on, man! It's like with all the trouble you've had with dogs, like the post office is who you want to work for. Yeah, I mean, hey, what are you doing? Sounds like the guy ain't very smart. Not wrapped too tight. <laughs> Hearing more and more voices, so to get yeah. rid of these voices because he's passing more and more dogs every single day. <laughs> yeah. Dude, so he thinks to get rid of these voices that he just needs to move. So he moves to Yonkers, New York. Hmm, not very far. Judges a dog show. No. <laughs> and all these crimes take place in either Yonkers, Brooklyn, uh, I'm sorry, Brooklyn, Bronx, Yonkers, and Queens. Okay. So he's, he's in pretty much all the boroughs. Yeah. He moves into Yonkers, and one of his neighbors is a guy named Sam Carr, who is the owner of the dog Harvey that I mentioned, the okay. uh, chocolate lab, who gives him a lot of trouble. Eventually, that dog is really giving him the business and really fucking warping his mind. So much so 
that David Berkowitz one day throws a Molotov cocktail into the yard where the fucking dog lives. What? Dogs ever give you trouble? No. Not, not like that. that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, if they did, that's that might be what you resort to, resort to Jake. I've been thinking about throwing a Molotov cocktail into the garage of these guys on my street that have motorcycles that are really loud. But I would never do it to a dog. Yeah, that would be a very mean thing to do. Only loud motorcycle mm-hmm. guys. <laughs> Great, now I can't do it. I have to think of something else. It's premeditated. And oh, I'm, I'll add this, and maybe I can find a way to attach this, but a few years ago, I wrote a um, a pilot script for a show that I entitled Harvey, which is based upon the dog that he had beef with. Nice. I think I've heard you talk about this. <laughs> and Shaner yeah. did the illustrations for it. Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, I amazing. think it turned out very well, and I, it's just there. Did that Molotov cocktail kill Harvey? No. Okay. No. It only made him stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm mad. in the yard. <laughs> Imagine, though, if dogs are really evil and only just a few people can hear. That would be. And he was one of them. He was like, ah, fuck this. That's the basis of my script is that the dogs can talk to the mentally ill. This is great. I can't wait for this. Yeah, I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to show up one day dressed like a dog. <laughs> All right. I don't <laughs> and I'm going to read it to you. <laughs> great pitch meeting. This is great, but you did not have to. Uh... Jake's going to suckle my teat as I read it to you. <laughs> <laughs> you okay with that, Jake? Uh, yeah, I'm all right. Uh... So in June 1976, it's pretty tough for him to get a gun. So he's like, all right, I have an old army buddy. Why is it tough for him to get a gun? I think New York gun laws were difficult. Oh, they've always been like that. I don't know, but this is what I'm guessing. So he goes down to Houston, Texas, where it's very easy to get a gun. Yeah. He gets his boy, um, Billy Parker, to get him a gun. And he stays with Billy Parker's mom, and they have a very nice very nice stay together, and it's a pretty normal interaction. And they have no idea what he's about to embark upon. So he's going to use the gun that his buddy Billy buys him. He's going to take it back up to New York, and he's going to embark upon, emphasis on bark, upon- yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. Mayhem that people are going to remember for decades to come, Jake. He was going to really turn into a heel, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't expect this to be gun-related. Um, yeah, he switches to the gun. Excited to see what happens next. Not excited. You motherfucker. Not excited. I'll give you a hint. Anxious. <laughs> Anxious excitement. Pulls the trigger. In October of 1976, he shoots two women parked in a car. Two teenage women. One is 16, one is 18. Hmm. Yeah, so those are girls. Those that's they are. fucking that's insane. It is. They survive. Oh my god. Yep. About a month this later I can't buy a bucket. About a month later he does <laughs> 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 About a month later he pulls the same thing, except he, he pulls up on a, a car with two women in it. He asks for directions and before they can even respond, he shoots into the car. All right. He ends up paralyzing one of the women. Oh uh, terrible. And the other one did not. She did not pa- pass away. It's kind of implausible to me that a man in the 70s is stopping to ask women for directions. I just want to point that out. Yeah. That, that, that doesn't add up. That was sus to begin with. <laughs> they should have sped out of there immediately. Yeah, I think a, a, a more appropriate interaction would be asking them where a certain hot dog cart is. Yeah, it's, I'm hard okay. pressed to, to picture a, a guy... A Jersey Shore or New Yorker kind of guy being like, excuse me, you know how to get the uh, fucking one, the two, beak, three, three happy street. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, make a left around your mother's ass. There you go. That's <laughs> the kind of, that's the kind of yeah. behavior I expect. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, In January, all right, so, all right, so that's in January um, in... All right, no, so the, the, murder, the first murders occur in January. He pulls up on two kids in a car. He shoots them both dead. Damn. Yeah, he's really getting after him both here. Girls. Another, another parked car. Yep. Actually, one girl, one guy. Okay. Kills them both. And at, at this point, police know that he's specifically targeting women with long hair. Now, some people think that because uh, this guy had long, dark hair, that he might have mistaken him for a woman. But it was still another, there was another woman in the car, at least. There was, yeah. God, there that's was a man humiliating. The you die. And then the police were like, actually, everyone, we they thought he was a girl as well. <laughs> I know he's dead and <laughs> it's his family's totally And there's no reason to say yeah. this, but 
<laughs> During a press I'm the conference. kind of guy that lets all the facts out there. <laughs> the commissioner gets on TV. <laughs> Poor Bobby Brown. Uh, just, you know, we Bobby thought he was Brown a chick. Bobby Brown, Buppo. We found a piece of duct tape at the scene. Probably used to tape his penis to his asshole. We can't be sure. We got forensics checking it out right now. We got, we got a helmet expert working on it right now to see if the imprint that we found inside the duct tape does, in fact, miss the Buscatucci's helmet. <laughs> all we can say for sure is that he might have lived if he didn't look like a girl. <laughs> and not for nothing, but we want to send our condolences to the Bustacucci Busta family. <laughs> <laughs> Thoughts and prayers with you. I know Mrs. Bustacucci has been a staple of the Bronx community for a very long time. This Busta is, uh, we, we, we will not get a wink of sleep <laughs> until we honor the Bustacucci name by catching this. Bustacucci. Fuck. Wow, what a convenient last name this guy had. Yeah, uh, Armando Bustacucci. <laughs> Was this imaginary victim's name? <laughs> Based on a real victim. <laughs> Just want to point that out. Yeah, we did not. Sp- yeah. We did not stray very far from <laughs> the facts. Now, <on> now, <laughs> like a like a Law and Order episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ripped from the headlines. <laughs> dumb, dumb, and, and <laughs> digging up the corpses and disgracing them. <laughs> <laughs> Ripped from the headlines are and you put- torn from the graves. <laughs> Once pretty- again, we want to send condolences <laughs> to the Buster Coochie family. No mother should ever have to endure the horror of identifying a Buster Coochie at the morgue. <laughs> Who keeps putting all this body paint on all these freshly <laughs> deceased bodies? Jake, in March of 1977, he kills again. He shoots a girl in the head. Damn. Just hates women. Is Jordan <gasps> Peterson before? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't want to accuse Jordan Peterson. Jordan. I always assumed he was a knife, knife man. Initially, yeah. Yeah, but he goes to. It's just so much quicker, big time. so much, uh, so much easier to get away when you're using a gun. It's very New York too. It yeah, is, yeah. Efficient. Mm-hmm. In April of 1977, uh, he strikes again, Jake. Another parked car, both dead. This time, he leaves a note at the scene, and he signs the note, the son of Sam. So this is when this starts to, to spread like wild. Okay. Huh. What Actually, else does the note say? Uh, well, dude, he left, sent a fucking, left and sent a fucking ton of notes. There's a website. I think it's called The People versus David Berkowitz, if you want to check out some of these notes, and they have all of them on there. It's a really cool resource. Oh, cool. And uh, I printed out a couple of them. It's a, it's a script about a talking dog named Harvey. <laughs> Dude, one thing, <laughs> one thing that he was uh, a prolific name giver. Oh, okay. So he gave himself a ton of different nicknames. Do you want to hear some of them? Yeah. Uh, the Chubby Behemoth, which oh. is the name of our friend Sam Talon's podcast. Yeah. Oh. I'm in Lund. He says, here are some names to help you along. Forward them to the inspector for use by NCIC. And I quote, the Duke of Death. Nice. Not bad. The Wicked King Wicker. Mm, hard wordy. to say. Yeah, the twenty-two disciples of hell. But he's only yeah. one man. It's the voices. All right, this is the t- you're either going to love or hate this one. Harvey's heroes. <laughs> <laughs> the Yonkers Yacker. <laughs> All right, love or hate this one. John Wheaties, rapist and suffocator of young girls. Wheaties, like the cereal. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus man. Christ. Here's where he's getting that from. He so ads. his he neighbor, Sam Carr, has two sons named John and Michael, and John's nickname was Wheaties. So I think he looked up to these guys, especially John. And get this. So the, looked up to him so much that he wanted to besmirch his name for eternity by calling him child rapist. Jesus. <laughs> but dude, I really like you so much. So uh, I named myself after you. You want to <laughs> hear my nickname? <laughs> <laughs> Remember how your nickname was Wheaties? <laughs> uh, how's this sound? John Wheaties, little girl body ruiner and fucking killer <laughs> and and uh, innocence to stealer. That's <laughs> that's a terrible name. I'm yeah, that is too wordy. It, what was his version? It's a wake in progress. <laughs> his version was John Wheaties, rapist and suffocator of young girls. Jesus Christ, he does it does have a much better ring than where I was going. Buddy, wait to hear this. So in 2021, I believe, there was a Netflix series called Sons of Sam. And this guy um, 
a journalist by the name of Maury Terry thought that perhaps the son of Sam, David Berkowitz, could have been working in connection with the two car boys. Because son of Sam always says that he was part of, part of a lar- larger syndicate of Satanists. Really? Yeah. I don't know how true that is. Uh, apparently there was a park close by to where he lived where there was like like ritual activity. Hmm. So, I don't know. That sounds pretty fucking creepy. It is weird. Yeah. At the very least, it's weird. That is like seeing that in the park at night. Dude, oh, oh, my, my God. God. Your stomach That's- sinks. <clears throat> You cannot run fast enough. That's away. like when you see like those uh, people that live underneath the cities. You ever see Ooh. those developments? Like I just saw one in New York. Like people have like shopping carts and beds down like in that like abandoned system. They're old like uh, railway systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, mo people. Speaking of which, them and bed bugs ended up being real. <laughs> <laughs> when I went into the, into the hallway to use the bathroom, there was a woman sitting in the darkness. What? Oh God! Yep. Oh my god! She was rolling a blunt, so okay. I, I know it wasn't anything too bad, but okay. <laughs> it was very strange to be doing without the light on. Um, yeah, yeah, it's not very. It wasn't the lady from the ring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was the lady from the ring. <laughs> now get this: I brought you guys a letter that David Berkowitz wrote to Samuel Carr. Would you like to hear it about the the dog fucking with him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. On April 19, 1977, he wrote, Samuel Carr, I have asked you kindly to stop that dog from howling all day long, yet he continues to do so. I pleaded with you. I told you how it is destroying my family. We have no peace, no rest. Now I know what kind of person you are and what kind of family you are. You are cruel and inconsiderate. You have no love for any other human beings, you selfish Mr. Carr. My life is destroyed now. I have nothing to lose anymore. I can see that there shall be no peace in my life or my family's life until I end yours. Oof. You wicked, evil man, child of the devil. I curse you and your family forever. Pray to God that he takes you, your whole family, off the face of the earth. People like you should not be allowed to live on the planet. Signed, a citizen. <laughs> Another one of his famous nicknames. <laughs> Yeah, didn't um, go with the nicknames here. Uh, nothing, nothing elaborate. Just plain and simple. A citizen beat around the bush at all in that. That is filled with rage. Yeah, and it didn't say anything about the dog speaking English. Yeah, it was just howling. Yeah, which is like, come on, man. It's a neighborhood dog, man. Get specifics. Yeah, I'm sure it wasn't. And not, and not everybody was hearing. Mm-hmm. Is that all you heard? Was dogs howling? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, what the fuck? (laughs) When is this going to end? That shoulder-length brunette hair. That's not long. (laughs) I mean, I love that also he pins that my life is now ruined on the dog barking, yet he has victims (laughs) under his belt. Yeah. Yeah. So July 31st, 1977, uh, he victimizes two more people. One, it's a it's a uh, a man and a woman. The man loses an eye in the shooting, and the woman is killed. Hmm. Man have long hair. I don't know. It's a great question. Yeah. It's a great question for, for a caveman. Cave yeah, it's <laughs> new. <laughs> Jake no <Whoa>. like. <laughs> man no have long hair. Jake no beat off. <laughs> <laughs> So this dumb fuck was wandering around the neighborhood on foot. He drove to the neighborhood. Fortunately for everyone in New York, the cops were out writing tickets that night. He's one of the cars that got ticketed. So somebody described him. And um, because of the description, they're, th- they're thinking like, all right, like he was on foot. They're like, all right, maybe we should start looking into the people that were that were given tickets. So they start going through you know, all the information they have for every car that was ticketed and they have his his information on file, Jake. Wow. So eventually in August 10th, they get a warrant to search his car. They search his car. They find a rifle and photos from various crime scenes where people were attacked. So this is the same night he got the ticket. They just like went back to the car and searched it? No, it took 10 days. Oh, 10. So July 31st, they were able to eventually able to figure out that people were ticketed there. So they figured, all right, this guy gotcha. was on foot, so maybe he parked close by. Okay. And on August 10th, they're able to put it all together. Wow. They, they search his car. 
then they find out they find all this shit they wait for him to come out of his apartment he gets in his car and once he gets in the car they arrest him hmm. what do you think he says when they arrest him you guys hear about that dog <laughs> <laughs> stop barking at me he says well you got me hmm. that's what he says he does but he does blame the dog for the murders <laughs> It's a dog. <laughs> Dude. Are we picking up Harvey on the way? Because that's just not fair. <laughs> yeah. We need to take him to the pound. He's a co-conspirator. <laughs> and that was the end of his run? That was the end of his run. How many people did he kill total? I think six. Hmm. He's really up there with, um... Why is his name so recognizable when there's people with fucking, like, <clears throat> dozens of bodies, you know? I think just because he held the entire city in a wave of terror. Yeah. You know? that, I think because it happened in New York, if it had happened in, like, fucking Milwaukee, you probably would have never heard of the guy. Mm -hmm. It was definitely during that phase, too, where, like, every, like social, like, the serial killers were fucking running rampant. Yeah. So the media just ran with it and terror. I think the media is more culpable gotcha. of terrorizing the city than he is. It's funny you mention that because he did become big on writing letters to newspapers. From jail? No, while he was out. Oh, really? Yep, while he was and out like, still committing these crimes. Zodiac style? Like yep. talking about being yep. a murderer? He would write to the Daily News and the New York Post. Hmm. And this is uh, post-Zodiac, right? So he's getting inspo directly from hmm. yeah, another I letter I think the writer? Zodiac began in the mid-60s. Okay. And I think lasted until maybe the early 80s. Uh, I'm not a big Zodiac guy, so I'm not There sure. was a, like a decade or so of uh, downtime or something in that time. I don't know. Yeah, so it sounds I've like only seen the movie. New York wanted one. You know what I mean? They wanted yeah. a Zodiac. <laughs> Where's our Taurus? <laughs> and he's the guy that had the dog ears to be the guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was pretty funny, too. In uh, June of 77, he wrote a letter to an old neighbor called uh, John Cassara. And he said, uh, I, I just want to wish you uh, that you get well soon in regards to falling off your roof. John Cassari didn't fall off his roof. <laughs> Until a week later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, another funny thing that he blamed the murders on was Hall & Oates. Whoa. Whoa. He said that the song... In the 70s, they were already banging? Get this. So he says, the song Rich Girl possessed him to kill. Meanwhile, I don't think Rich Girl came out until after he was caught. Hmm. Yes, they met a temple in like I think the eighties, right? No, or was it seventies? Maybe some of their stuff was late seventies, wow. but I thought I'd have to look that up. Yeah, eighties uh, staples, so many. But dude, they're God. they're pretty uh, pretty. They're stinkers themselves, Hollow Notes, because they ended up making a song about the son of Sam. Oh, man, either she was. No, it's called Diddy Doo Wop. I hear the voices. Really? Yeah. Not no, they, kind of a cool song. Yeah, they troll. Son of Sam? Dude, it's a pretty catchy song, and they talk about being on the train and wanting to lash out at people. That's so cool. One time I was um, I was down for the count at Bonnaroo one year. Just a full day of acid and ecstasy and booze. Jesus. And the sun had set, and I was just like in the grass at the top of this hill next to a food tent. I think it was, <laughs> I think it was a Subaru tent. John, don't call your girlfriend that. <laughs> <coughs> I deserve that. <laughs> and uh, they started playing. Boom, bap, boom, bap, boom, bap, boom, bap, boom, oh, yeah. Bap. It was Chromeo and Daryl Hall. And I was like, Hall's good enough for me. I got up and danced <laughs> the fucking night away, dude. Who the fuck is Chromeo? <laughs> He's a DJ. Oh, Christ. <laughs> it was fine. They were doing a full concert together. It was great, in fact. It saved me from. You guys ever get risen from the dead from a song? Just fucking totally partied out. You're done. You're the guy in Wayne's World about to spew. Yeah. And then you get a song that brings you back to life. Sanitarium at Metallica's oh. Summer Sanitarium Tour did that for me. When you were at the concert? Nice. Yeah. Yeah? Yep. You were fucked up? Uh, dude, I was. I think I told you this before, where I found nachos. It was a gift <laughs> from God. You found nachos. I had, I had blown all my money that day. I didn't have much to begin with. And it was I, sprayed all over the toilet seat. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't far off, Jake. I oh, just, no! I was down in the, in the pit area for most of the day, but, dude, it was like, I think it was fucking... Kid Rock, System of a Down. It was a full day of uh, just music. a whole fucking day yeah. out in the sun in Baltimore. Wow. And I had blown through all my money, so I couldn't afford to get anything to eat. I was fucking starving. And I just started wandering up to the upper deck. And 
this serendipitous plate of nachos appeared. Uh, it was just a light on the shining steps. on it. Look, they're already loaded. <laughs> <laughs> it was just it was a full fucking plate of nachos that somebody probably put down to like gather themselves or something. <laughs> they forgot they right had behind them. you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I picked them up. I went and I sat down in the upper deck. I ate them. And they started playing sanitarium. You're like that dad in like a sitcom that runs down and grabs the toast off the plate on the way out the door, and just the kids just like, "What happened? That yeah. was that was my breakfast, that was, yeah. Papa." <laughs> <laughs> that brought brought you back though. Sanitarium. Yeah, man. Yeah, it got me, and uh, I enjoyed the rest of the concert. What a long fucking day. That man. also brought back the West Memphis Three. <laughs> Sanitarium. It's true. Yeah. I don't know the reference. You've never seen that story on HBO? Mm-mm. Oh, dude, it's fucked up, man. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. There were child murders in West Memphis, Arkansas, right? Uh, I don't know. I think it's West yeah. Memphis, Arkansas. And uh, they they arrested these kids because they were accused of being, mainly because they were accused of being Satanists. Yeah. Like, these are just like three hammerheads. And yeah, they, what do you mean a hammerhead? Remember that? Like, like metal guys. Yeah, you remember you never they, heard that term? No. Remember how they put the, all the blame of Columbine on Marilyn Manson? Yeah. They put the murder blame on these kids because they were like into Marilyn Manson and Metallica. And okay. Yeah. And these kids, like, they did a lot of time in jail. They didn't get out until fairly recently. Yeah. And it was totally wrongful from conviction. They had to, like, accept, like, some weird plea where it was like, all right, you accept guilt for this, but we're going to let you out right now as soon as you accept guilt. So as long as, because I think, all right, there's going to be a lot more to the story because I think there was a massive cover-up. I think evidence was hidden. And I think most likely the guy that stands out as the primary suspect is one of the stepdads. How many people people were murdered? Three children. Jesus. And dude, it's fucked up because in the first, the first, um, what the fuck was the name of that special, Jake? Oh God! I think it was uh, was it was like Devil's Playground or something like that. Yeah, something like that. I'm sure there'll be a million comments after this comes out with what it is. But dude, the very first scene from that, they're showing like the police footage of the crime scene, and like you could see the kids' bodies in the in the crime scene. It was like this weird wooded area by a creek. Like one of the kids had like part of his genitals bitten off. They do. My what th- year was this? Early nineties, maybe yeah. like ninety one. Yeah. God. Yeah. That's why the song gave me so much fun. energy at the at the concert. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why it brought you back to life, you <laughs> sicko? <laughs> well, they you know what they used they said they were big Metallica fans and like Metallica, I guess like with Equal Justice Foundations, like they got together and they started finding all this evidence and pilot like they worked to kind of like get them out of jail. And it worked. Like their whole Metallica's whole fan base got behind oh. these three people and when was that decades later they started Dude, it was... a couple years like after the crime okay. right like after the documentaries came out the first documentary there were i think there were three hbo documentaries yeah. on it My and God. then the last one was this. about them getting out and yeah. the one guy damien Eccles, i've seen interviews with him i think he might have been on bennington and he's a very well-read guy and uh yeah it's just fucking nuts that immediately they picked them because these kids were just fucking yeah. outcast in that area and yeah. they just automatically equated satanism with killing kids <laughs> now i don't have a concert where anything has brought me back to life because i'm fully alive all the time but i do have a no, song because you don't fucking drink 12 beers as, yeah. soon as you wake up <laughs> no it's just 10 <laughs> chocolate milkshakes oh uh, man. <laughs> that'll give you the sugar to get through the day but, that was the thing it's so hard to it was so hard. I don't fucking drink all day like that, but like, you know what? In I heaven, just a, a cooler full of Budweisers in the Baltimore sun. Man, that does sound nice. I should try that once. In the day Baltimore drinking, sun. yeah, it doesn't have to be the Baltimore sun. Nah, yeah, they got sun in Philly. <laughs> you know what? I do have a song for is in video games. I be- I can become invincible if you put one song on. I've been playing NHL. It's a third period. Oh, there's, yeah. There's five minutes left in the period. Some jams on NHL. And I put, I, if I put on, oh, this is, they do have jams on NHL, but this is, I go external. I go to the boom box. I start cranking uh, LaBouche's Be My Lover. Ooh, that's la, a good da, song. Da, dee, dee, da, be da, da. my lover, won't you be? And then next thing you know, fucking break away, fucking one-timer, go, one-timer, go. Oh, okay. yeah. Next thing you know, I'm going to be my lover. lover. 
I'm pulling come out my to goalie. Come out on stage to that song. It's a, it's a fucking banger, dude. Yeah, that's like yeah. if that sets you off, that should be the last thing you hear before you go you know fucking what? absolutely right. mental at I the should, crowd. Fuck, dude, you're right. I should fucking. That should always be that. your play song. Yeah, you don't want that to happen. He starts mashing the buttons <laughs> with his penis. <laughs> Go! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those red lights aren't from the net, pal. That's the cops. He's winning a fight with his dung. <laughs> dung fighter. It's my favorite video game. Finish him off. But yeah, this motherfucker, man. The Duke of Death. A.K.A. John Wheaties, rapist and suffocator of young girls, Jake Matera. <laughs> no, 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 no. David Berkowitz. Real fucking Jerkowitz. What's what are, the um, nationality of David Berkowitz? Bronx. All right, so <laughs> his mother, his birth mother was Italian. Okay. And his father was Jewish. Okay. He later converted to Christianity. That's what he spends his time doing now. Um in prison or he's out? In prison and also like uh, he films videos that allow him to do ministry that he then shares with other other prisons and schools. And Is it on YouTube? I don't know if you could see him performing the ministry, but I, I have seen interviews with him on Inside Edition where he's talking about what he does. Wow. And he does seem, he seems lucid now. It's And he's, he doesn't seem to like relish in, in giving up the details of what he did like a lot of these fucking guys do you can see their fucking eyes light up when they're talking about their crimes yeah did they try to go for the death penalty at all new york uh didn't have it he got he got several i think he got 625 to life sentences one for each yeah so minimum of 25 times 6 150 years one for each member of menudo so what you're saying is uh he's no longer the son of sam but the son of god yeah okay very, very good. <laughs> so he'll never, he'll never get out. But he's also he's been in there a while, right? Yeah, he yeah. might live a long time. All right. So if he's born in 1953, that's 47 plus 23. That he's 70 now. Yeah. Has he had any more interactions with dogs since being arrested? <laughs> that's a great question. It's funny you bring that up because I recently watched a video on how cats are being used as a therapy tool. For prisoners? Prisoners. Which is, they seem to do pretty well with them. Why not dogs? Cats Too much upkeep. More chill. Yeah. And plus, I mean, there's so much less muss. No and fuss. fuss. <laughs> do you know where he is? Is he in Rikers? No, he's in, fuck, it's like. It's Attica? Like, no, it's called like Wall Kill or something. It's actually close to where we're going to be on Friday night. It's it's within driving uh, distance of Poughkeepsie. You it's should visit the Hudson them. Valley. Yeah, it is. What's a great place to be? Please. Buddy, I would say, just from looking at it the map at, on the map today, I would say it's less than an hour drive from Poughkeepsie. You guys need to go. You need to visit them. We'll see. I'll see what their um, conjugal visit Well, this like. Nancy's going home the same night, so. Are you really? Yeah. Damn. I'm staying, baby. <laughs> hey, do me a favor. Do. Stop staying, before the staying, show. Staying, stop staying. at the prison. Go dressed as a dog. And uh, <laughs> tell me how it goes. Okay. <laughs> I'll do that for you. I heard you mention Attica. Did you ever see that documentary? Mm, but I have met a couple people that worked work at Attica. Like currently? Yeah. There's a crazy documentary. But like Apparently they slaughtered like all the inmates and all these hostages because there was a prisoner takeover in the 70s. Is that why Al Pacino yells it in yes. um, yep. Dog Day it, Afternoon? It was very uh, topical. Yeah. Yeah. This insane documentary where they all kind of like surrendered and then they just because it was a huge like news debacle everyone's just like fuck it and they just like killed a bunch of people yikes dude yeah. it's a crazy documentary i saw it and uh it was like jaw dropping dang yeah they had like they i think mike do you know the story about attica like how i many, don't know it was a couple of months where these prisoners held uh they basically took over the guards and ha- held them as uh hostages and then like um, like rep- state representatives would come into the prison to meet with the prisoners and have like sit down meetings. Some would stay and then some would like go home and they'd just try to get them like bet just to have better conditions. Yeah. Like heat and like access to like, you know, um, just like taking care of wounds and better food. And, yeah. And it was like a very like human, just 
they just wanted like human level basic human yeah. rights. yeah there had to have been guys though that were just like tell me what some swank too <laughs> yeah yeah for they want what? a copy of jugs <laughs> <laughs> the most recent copy yeah. of jugs it's a pretty horrible uh situation man you t- totally check it out tell them i wouldn't be angry if they threw in a copy of barely legal <laughs> and then they just slaughter them in the end it's like fucking yeah it's so, like a <clears throat> prison waco exactly that's exactly what it's like fucking a yeah, because they were supposed to just go in and like, it was supposed to be like a peaceful like ending. Mm-hmm. And then um, this one like hard-headed governor was just like, no, fuck this. And then they tear gassed him. And they're supposed to tear gas him and then let everyone like out. You know, everyone was supposed to surrender. Mm-hmm. And it said like somebody gave the order just to start firing. And then everyone started firing. All the prisoners are in the yard. All these armed gunmen are on like the top and just fucking. Oh, my God. Yeah. And like, they, I mean, they they not only killed prisoners, they killed like guards they killed mm. hostages like they killed all these people Fuck. like insane that's a big um oopsie dude yeah major oopsie <laughs> <laughs> reporting for duty <laughs> <laughs> we have commissioner oopsie here to talk about the son of sam murders yeah we thought he was a girl uh <laughs> so it's a shame sorry mr uh what was the name the fucking Busta... Busta Coochie. <laughs> Busta Coochie. <laughs> Sorry, Busta Coochie family. Nunzio Busta Coochie. We gotta get an airbrush t-shirt for the Busta Coochie family. <laughs> Actually, probably <Yeah>. shouldn't. <laughs> Paradise Lost is the name Par- of... Yes, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the documentaries. That's right. Oh, and the John Milton work. Are you familiar with Paradise Lost? It was a Final Jeopardy answer the other day, and I was one of the only ones to get it right in my home between two dogs... And a human. Damn, you talking to dogs too? That's that's my favorite poem too. Paradise Lost. Between two dogs and a human. <laughs> <laughs> a little too sexual, but yeah. Also, yeah. Also, my favorite sex tape adapted from a <laughs> short story. You guys, boys, I had a lot of fun. Me too. Thanks for teaching so me fun. about the son of. Thanks Sam. for teaching me. And Jake, that's a very interesting story about Attica. It's wild. Yeah. That's why I don't be going into Attica. Same. That's the reason I've never been to Attica. Mm-hmm. I just, you just stay in the basement? Mm-hmm. No, I don't like the basement either. Oh, no. I don't really go anywhere in my house. <laughs> I just stay on the front porch like a fucking lunatic. Not a pl- bad place to be, Mike. Mm-hmm. Although I'm not really scared of my basement now. <laughs> <laughs> um, can we start the next episode continuing with that thought? <laughs> yeah, let's okay. do it. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Wait, if you're watching this on Patreon, thank you for becoming a patron. Thank you for supporting us. Because of your support, we're able to do all the fucking dumb shit that we do. If you're not a patron yet, consider joining our Patreon. And you can do that by going to patreon.com slash stinkers. That's L-I-L-S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S. If you become a patron, you get every episode a week early. You get an extra episode every month. We do a live AMA just for patrons every month. We do book club meetings for patrons. Uh, we're putting out a lot of sketches now. So much fun shit that we're doing in your support on the Patreon allows us to do more and more of the dumb shit that we love doing. So do that by going to patreon.com slash little stinkers. Also, uh, thank you to everybody that's bought my book, On Perks. If you haven't yet, check out a copy. You can do so by going to onperks.com, O-N-P-E-R-C-S.com. You can buy the print copy, the ebook copy. I think the real bang for your buck is the audio book. And uh, that features fucking Tim Butterly, Matt McCusker, John McKeever, Chris Wood, Mary Rodzinski, Chip Chantry, Drew, Mont- Drew Montana, David James, Tubbs, Ryan Shaner, the whole fucking gang. Murderer's Row. It really is, man. So check that out at onperks.com. Guys, what do you want to promote? (laughs) (laughs) Shit, man. Follow me at uh, Johnny Delco on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, follow me at Jake Matera. Thank you. See you guys. Bye.